Hello, we're the Summerfields, and we're the pastors of Word of God Fellowship Church. That's right, our whole family is part of the pastoral Amen. staff. Yes. We're excited about being able to minister to you by television, but also we love to minister to you in person. We have all kinds of things available for children, adults, married people, single people, divorced people, separated, widowed, transitioned, whatever your situation is. We've got something for you at Word of God Fellowship Church. We're a family-style ministry. We're all in ministry together. We want to be a blessing to you. We'd love to see you real soon, and stay tuned for the program. God bless you. Hello, God bless you. Thank you for joining me again. I'm so glad to be able to spend time with you. You know, I think it's important that we spend time together like this so we can really, really make things clear to you. And God wants to really, really cause you to be successful in life. That's what I'm going to be talking about during this time. Seven steps to supernatural success. That's right. God does want you to succeed in life even succeed in a supernatural way from a supernatural means because he's a supernatural God and he lives inside of you. In fact, I want to start at Joshua chapter 1. I want to read some verses in Joshua chapter 1. So if you've got your Bible, if you'll just turn to Joshua chapter 1 with me or you've got your iPad or whatever device you've got with this Bible on it, I want you to join me so we can see how much God wants us to be successful. And I've, I've come up with seven steps that I believe are bona fide steps for supernatural success. I'm going to give you those steps in a few moments, but let's look at Joshua chapter 1 and verses 6 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. It says, But be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7 says, Only be thou strong and very courageous. You've got to really stand strong on the word of God, stand strong in the word of God, and you've got to stand the test of life to come. Because you got to trust God and know that he does want you to be successful. It says that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which my Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. If you don't turn away from God's word, you will prosper whatever way you go. You know, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 22 says, The word of God is life to those that find it and health to all their flesh. Verse 20 says in Proverbs 4, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep my words in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them, health to all their flesh. So Joshua is writing here that we need to keep the word of God in our, our, our focus at all times. Verse, verse 8 says, This book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart out of thy mouth. So we got to keep the word of God being spoken out of our mouth. Once we get it in our heart and our mind, we've got to then meditate every day and speak the word of God about our situation. Don't speak failure, even though failure may be all around you. Don't speak uh, difficulty, even though difficulties are there. Speak success. Speak the word of God. Speak things like 1 John 4 and 4, which says, greater is he. You've already overcome because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. If you want to have that, you got to speak that. Speak things like Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, now unto him that is able to do, even when you aren't able, when you can't figure your way, now unto him who's able to do exceeding above Abundantly above all that we ask or think according to his power that works in us. That's right. The power of God works in us and we are able to do things even greater than we think because he's able to do those things through us. So keep that in mind. So verse 8 continues. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in the word of God day and night. And then it says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. All that is written. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We got to know God's word and we got to live God's word. He says this book of the law says not to part of your mouth, but you shall meditate uh, in it day and night. Then it says that thou make thy way prosperous, that thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So let me, let me read verse 8 again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein in the word of God. For then thou shalt, when you observe to do all that is written in God's word, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, let's just go over these, these steps, seven steps to supernatural success. Step one, step one, make sure that, that you get God's word in your heart and keep it in your heart. 
Make sure that God word, God's word stays in your heart at all times. Psalm 119 and verse 11, David says, Thy word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So David would say, by hiding the word in his heart, it would keep him from sinning against God and keep him from experiencing difficulties that come from not keeping God's word. You know, Proverbs chapter 2, I want to share that with you starting at verse, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 3. That's it. Chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. This is what it says. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3 if you've got your Bible there. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Let your heart keep his commandments. For length of days, how about that? And long life, wow, I love that. And peace shall they add to thee. So he's saying that by keeping the word of God in your heart, you get length of days, you get long life, and you get peace. Okay? Step two, step two for seven steps to supernatural success. Step two, release your mind from life's limitations. You know, you're never going to have any more in life than you think. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 Solomon, who was actually listed as the wisest, richest man ever in the Bible, before his time or after his time, he says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your life right now, so you got to release your life, release your mind rather from life's limitations. Life will limit you based on how you were raised, based on the house you grew up in, the background you came from, what side of the tracks you grew up on, what your family name is. Life's limitations come from whatever we've been used to. Sometimes we got to break out on the left and right in our minds, take the lid off our minds and begin to see things like God sees things and begin to see ourselves as God sees us. God sees us as heirs of God, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 17. It says we're heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So we got to see ourselves like God's word sees us. So then, therefore, you've got to release yourself from minds, uh, release your mind from limitations in life. That's step two for seven steps for supernatural success. And, and, and here's another scripture here. Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55 in verse 8 and 9. I want to read those verses because we have to understand that God expects us to think like he thinks. And the way you find out how God thinks is to know what his word says. Because God's word is really what his thoughts are. Isaiah 55 in verse 8 says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my, your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In other words, we have to elevate our thinking, release our mind from limitations, elevate our thinking to think like God. The way we figure out how God thinks is to know what his word says. Whatever God's word says about you, that's what God says. You know what God's word says about you in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20? It says, nothing in Matthew 17 verse 20 shall be impossible unto you. How about that? All those things that you thought were impossible as a believer, as a spirit-filled, born-again believer, those things are not impossible unto you. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says, all things are possible to them that believe. Isn't that something? All things, so no matter what it is, whether it's the great job you want, the great business you want to have, the great marriage you want to have, it's all possible if you believe God's word and apply his word to your life and keep your mind away from the limitations of life that keep you thinking small, but think like God thinks. Step three, I'm going to give you step three, and I'm going to stop at step three. Uh, maintain God's morals. No matter what goes on in life, have godly morals in your life. I want to give you an example of Joseph in Genesis 39. He was a young man about 17 years old whose brothers sold him as a slave, and he was uh, mistreated and misused and abused, and it was in a slave master's house named Potiphar, but yet he was prosperous. He was successful, and he prospered Potiphar, his slave master, and even Potiphar's wife tried to get Joseph to commit an immoral act of adultery, but Joseph refused. He had integrity with God, holiness with God. He had godly morals, and he told her, I cannot sin against God by lying with you. So you got to maintain godly morals. That's the third step for seven steps to supernatural success, and God will honor you keeping godly morals and cause success to come in your life. You'll make your way prosperous by keeping the word of God in your mouth, meditating in it day and night. You will, as Joshua says in chapter one, make your way prosperous and have good success. Well, I'm going to, we're going to be talking about this a little more later on, so you know, we'll join us again for the next time we're talking about seven steps for supernatural success. Thanks for being with us this time. I want to pray with you before 
you know, we, we, we close though. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for those that have been viewing, listening to this teaching. Father, help them to know that the Word of God can help them to be successful and that if they follow these principles, that they can experience success and prosperity in their lives, that you want them to be su successful and you want them to prosper. Touch their hearts and minds to think like you and help them to focus on the Word of God. I pray blessings and prosperity and peace and success for them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with me. Hello, and I'm so glad that you've taken the time to be part of our program. I want to talk to you about something that I think is very important. I'm Dr. Frank Summerfield. I'm founder of Word of God Christian Academy. I'm a former educator. I've taught elementary school, secondary school, taught at two universities, and education has been a passion of mine for some time. And you may want to know, well, why are you talking to me about education? Because you may have a child or children that, that need an education that can be in a Christian environment with smaller classrooms. Word of God Christian Academy has had 21 graduating classes. We, we're operating from K-5 to grade 12, 21 graduating classes, with 78% of our graduates receiving academic or athletic scholarships. Our, chil our children are nurtured, they're in smaller classrooms, and Christian values are constantly promoted in our academic environment. Word of God Christian Academy has a record of children coming from the public schools and actually their GPA going up one point to one and a half points from a 2.0 to possibly a 3.0, 3.5 in one year of attending Word of God Christian Academy. It's the number on the screen. We'd like to invite you to come for a tour and consider Word of God Christian Academy as the answer to your problems that you may be experiencing and let us help you as a former educator Myself, I dedicate myself to helping people and their children reach their academic goals. Give Word of God Christian Academy a chance. I don't believe you'll be disappointed. Thanks for listening to this brief announcement. God bless you. Whatever you want to happen in your life, you need to find the Word of God that says that. If you want prosperity in your life, find the Word of God that tells you you are prosperous. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I would or I pray above all things, above everything else, that thy soul may that you may prosper rather, and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Your soul is your mental thinking processes. Suke is the Greek word. So how you think is how you're going to be. Proverbs 23 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are you thinking about? You want prosperity? You got to think like that. Okay? You can't think poverty and produce prosperity. You can't think failure and produce success. You can't think wealth and produce, or you can't think poverty and produce wealth. You can't think sickness and produce health. You can't think death and produce life. Say amen, because you're going to speak what you think. Whatever you're thinking about, you're going to eventually say it out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew 12 and verse 36 and 7 tells us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The heart is not really this heart, but the heart is really your thinking because the word cardia was the original Greek word for heart there in Matthew 12, verse 36 and 7, and it means the thoughts. It means the assumptions, the reasonings. So how you reason things, how you perceive things, how you analyze things, how you meditate in things is how you're going to be. That's what's going to come into your life, and you're going to speak what you think about. So you got to really watch and be cautioned, cautioned, or cautious about what you think about. Say amen. Okay, so let's go a little further here. So this man, he, he meditates in the Word of God day and night, and uh, his, his, uh, let me see, he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, this man that meditates in God's word day and night, and also those other three things, doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, doesn't stand where the center, but the lights in the word of God. When you light in the word of God, you, you, you're you going to make sure you have a set time to study, a set time to be in the presence of God with his word, and you're going to cherish his word at all times when you delight in God's word. This man will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that, uh, uh, that bringeth forth fruit in his season will be productive when it's time to be productive, okay? His leaf shall also not, also not wither. And whatsoever, notice this, whatsoever he doeth, he, what, what happens? Whatever he does, okay? If, if you run a Kool-Aid stand, which may sound like something that's insignificant, but let me tell you something, Kool-Aid has made a lot of money. Give God a hand clap. 
Kool-Aid done made some big dollars since Kool-Aid started. I can think about them days when all I had was Kool-Aid. When I didn't have no Kool-Aid, I put a little sugar and water and wish I had Kool-Aid. Give God a hand clap if you had to wish you had some Kool-Aid sometime. So don't, don't think that something is not, poss not possible for something to be successful. It's not the thing, it's you. Because it says whatsoever he doeth. If you are right with God and your mind is right with God and you meditate the word of God like you should and you know God's word and you believe God's word and you speak God's word and you meditate God's word and you make sure you're careful about who you associate with. You know, most of us are where we are or not where we should be because of who we've been hanging around. You got to be real selective about the company you keep because you're going to always be a victim of association or a victor of association or by association. I choose to be a victor by association so I don't associate with failure people. That's a good place for a hand clap. I don't associate with failure people. I don't disrespect them. I'm kind to them. I'm respectful and courteous, but I don't spend quality time with people who are failures, who are not going anywhere, who are on the treadmill of life, doing a lot of moving but not going anywhere gaining no distance, getting no closer to anything in the same place all the time. I don't spend quality time with people like that. Yes. Now, that might sound a little bit harsh, a little bit cruel, but my time is very valuable. It's worth money. I have to be selective about who I allow to have part of it. Yes. And I need to be around people who are going to enhance me, who are going to help me go further than I am, yes. Not because I'm trying to get a handout, but because they can say something that will stimulate me, yes. motivate me, activate me, yes. revelate me into my future. God's got a bright future for me. Yes. I can't risk contamination yes. by being around folk yes. who can contaminate my destiny. Yes. If you believe that, say amen. Yes. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, evil communications corrupt good manners and morals, or evil associations and companionships will corrupt good Morals. Say amen. Okay, so there are seven steps, seven steps. We've already seen significantly here that whatever we do is supposed to prosper. Whatever we do, whatever we attempt, whatever we decide to go into as our endeavors for our success is supposed to prosper. And it's not the thing necessarily that's the root of the prosperity and success. It is our relationship with God. It is our delighting in his word, meditating in his word day and night. Look at Joshua chapter 1 and notice some things in uh, verses, uh, let me see, 6, 7, and 8. Now, while you're turning to that, let me tell you, there are these seven, I'm only going to probably cover two, two steps today, maybe three, but I'll tell you what they all are. You can begin to document them if you want to. Step one in terms of, you know, supernatural success. When we talk about supernatural success, we're talking about success beyond your human abilities. Success about beyond what seems to be logical yes. and what seems to be just natural based on natural facts. Because kingdom success cannot be explained by natural information. Kingdom success is unexplainable. See, kingdom success uh, contains uh, capacities like Matthew 17 and verse 20, which says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. for their newest book oh, and boy it's shaking to... things up too money management matters in marriage uh -huh. <laughs> a really valuable book that you ought to pick up strengthen your marriage strengthen your faith strengthen your money Hello, God bless you. Hey, thanks for being with me again. We've been talking about a very, very interesting subject, teaching about seven steps for supernatural success. You know, we, we left off in our last teaching time talking about how that if we meditate in God's word, Joshua chapter one tells us in verses six through nine that if we meditate in God's word day and night, keep God's word in our mouth and are strong and, and stand strong on God's word and keep our faith strong, if we do that, then we'll make our way prosperous and have good success. You know, the word of God is, is the most important thing you can have in order to see success take place in your life. We want to go to step four. We talked about step one, step two, and three. 
earlier and previously, but we want to go straight to step four in seven steps for supernatural success. Step four is actually, step four is keep your heart pure and clean. You know, sometimes things happen in life, people may offend us or may mistreat us or misuse us, but we still have to keep forgiveness in our heart. Keep our heart pure and clean at all times. When your heart is pure, God pays close attention to you. In the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 9, the word of God says this, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So when your heart is clean and pure and perfect toward God, honest, you have integrity and you do the right thing and treat people like you want to be treated and forgive people no matter how difficult it is at times. When you do that, your heart is pure and clean with God and God is constantly roaming throughout the earth, his eyes, watching and, and, and doing things to cause you to be successful because your heart is pure and clean. Step five, step five in seven steps to supernatural success. You gotta keep the word of God coming out of your mouth at all times. It is really important. You know, some people don't understand this, but Proverbs chapter six and verse two is a real good example of how sometimes we hurt ourselves by saying the wrong things about ourselves. Proverbs six and verse two says, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. How about Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14? It says, a man shall be satisfied. I know I want to be satisfied. I'm sure you do too. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. In other words, what comes out of our mouth, the things we speak cause us to be satisfied. You know, Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says this, have faith in God. Jesus taught this, have faith in God. Some translations say have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God. Have faith in God for whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he saith S-A-I-T-H, that means continually, no matter how many storms come in your life, how many difficulties, roadblocks, obstacles, oppositions, you got to say what God's word says continually. Say that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Say that you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, according to Romans 8, 17. Say that God gives you the power to get the wealth, according to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Say that wealth and riches will be in your house, according to Psalm 112, verses 1, 2, and 3. you got to say what God's word says to have have what God's word says. So you got to constantly keep the word of God coming out of your mouth. I think Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 2 says, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of transgressors shall eat violence. Verse 3 in Proverbs chapter 13 says, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. And here's a very famous one, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20 says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Verse 21 in Proverbs 18 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Oh boy, isn't that amazing? Death and life both are in the power of what our tongue says. So we've got to keep God's word in our mouth at all times in order to really experience success in life. Okay, what about step six? Step six in seven steps for supernatural success. Step six says, or oh, this is what I've concluded, maintain constant daily and nightly meditation in the Word of God. In other words, once you learn the Word of God, you receive it and believe it by faith. You know, Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the more often you hear the Word of God, the more often your faith comes alive. And that's why you need to tune in to programs like this where the Word of God is taught, you know, plain and, and, and with accuracy. You need to be in services like we have uh, that, that you'll be seeing uh, eventually, our sanctuary, you know, full of people who are hearing the Word of God, believing the Word of God, applying the Word of God to their lives. You've got to constantly meditate in God's Word to experience success in life. Some examples are Psalm 1. Let me read Psalm 1 starting at verse 1 to you because it talks about meditating in God's word day and night and then it tells us what the results will be if we do that. Psalm 1 and verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, but his delight or whose delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law or his word he doth meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree, the man, the man and woman that meditates in God's word day and night. Sometimes you got to turn the TV off and stop watching those horror movies, and you got to get in the word of God. He shall be like a tree that plant, plant, that's planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper.
no matter what kind of business it is, if you get married, raising children, become an employee somewhere, whatever it is, it'll prosper if you meditate in God's word day and night. So step six is, you know, constantly meditate in God's word. Step seven in seven steps supernatural success is simply this. Don't quit no matter what. Stay in the race. It may get hard sometimes. It may get a little complicated. It may be challenging, but you got to stay in the race. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says to us very clearly, let us not be weary in well-doing. That really means let us not fade out or let us not pout out. Let us not doubt out. Let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we got to hang in there. We got to trust God and trust his word and believe that his word is true. You know, sometimes when you're in the wee hours of the night and things are troubling you and you don't, you can't sleep or whatever, you got to start meditating in God's word. You got to stand firm and believe that God's word is true. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God's got great things in store for you. God wants you to prosper. Third John verse two says this, beloved, I would, some translations say, I pray above all things, above everything, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. And your soul is simply your mind. Suke, the word soul. The original Greek word was suke. It means the thinking, the intellect, how you acquire knowledge. So the kind of things you think about become your life. In fact, you are a sum total today, according to Proverbs 23, verse 7. You are a sum total of how you've been thinking. And what you have in life is based upon what you've been thinking. And what you are doing in life or not doing is based upon what you've been thinking like. you got to think like God. Think like God's word. Learn God's word. Take his word seriously and be a meditator in it day and night. And be a speaker of his word constantly. Because as you speak God's word and keep God's word in your mouth, you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. And also you'll build faith in God as you speak his word and don't speak your circumstance. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Make people feel important all the time. Bless you, I'm excited. We've got some very exciting news for you. We're certainly looking forward to serving you through the ministry of the Word of God. And you know what? We've got a great, great schedule change. Instead of our 8.30 and 10.30 services, we're going to be doing one service, 9 o'clock. Get in early, get out, have the rest of the day for yourselves and your family. 9 o'clock starting October the 18th, we'll be doing one Sunday service, one Sunday service only at 9 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you for a great, powerful, explosive time. God bless you.